join. I think we have enough people in the room, so I think we'll just get started, and I'm sure more and more will join us as they are wrapping up work. Um, sure. So again, welcome everyone to today's workshop on advancing your career in product management. Uh, there is so much happening in in tech, startup world, and in the field of you know product management. We thought this is a timely topic to cover today, and uh, and something that I'm sure everybody will be working over a period of time because growth is continuous and forever. But uh, we saw that there was a lot of focus happening on helping people get into product management. Like we have also done a few sessions and workshops on that, right? But uh, we have done very few where, which focus on helping people just kind of level up their careers and go from associate PMs to you know, senior PM, VP, and then ultimately the product uh, head at their organization. So uh, we'll talk about that today. Just uh, a little bit of introductions before we get started. Um, I'll go first. So I'm Arjun, I'm the founder of Pivot, which is a startup that helps people make career transitions. So if you're thinking of, uh, you're looking for a new role or changing your domain or industry in any way, that's what we specialize in. Uh, we also help people move up in the organization. So that's why we are doing today's topic. And we have two very experienced product experts with us today. Uh, we have Nitin Kumar, who is the VP of products at Mintra. And we have Rishikesh Kunte, who is currently the VP of products at Bubble Insurance, and he has previously led a product globally at Zomato and several other large organizations. So thank you, Nitin and Rishikesh, again, for joining today. Um, maybe, uh, Nitin, you can start uh, by sharing a little bit about your background, uh, let people know some of the key inflection points in your journey, and then we will turn it over to Rishikesh. Sure. Okay, thanks, thanks Arjun, uh, and uh, and thanks once again for arranging this interesting session. And I hope this comes out to be useful for everybody. I will not take much time uh, because we want to keep maximum time for people to interact and you know brainstorm and maybe learn from each other. So quick, like thirty second introduction. You know, have been in industry for several years now, little over two decades. I started as a techie long back, uh, uh, and for initial six seven years, I used to write code, do architecture for product. Uh, and then slowly moved into product management. I moved into product management somewhere around 2006, 2007, when this function was not well understood. So made a lot of mistakes, a lot of hit and trials to understand what needs to be done, what you know uh, I don't need to do as a product manager, what I needed to unlearn as a tech person moving into product. Uh, and you know, luckily had got some time to do that. But in last few years, the product management has changed a lot. Uh, as I have worked in multiple startups, Snapdeal, Paytm, Mintra, I ran my own startup also. Uh, and I realized that the product management has changed a lot over the last few years. And the way industry is growing, this, this role is also becoming very dynamic. Uh, it varies from company to company, it varies from domain to domain. So, uh, and, and the speed of uh, execution is so much in the market that you know, people really get confused and, you know, really feel stressed out that how do we grow in product management role? So, you know, looking forward to this session. Uh, and once again, thanks, Arjun. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Nidin. Thanks, Arjun. So welcome to all. Thanks for taking time out on a Friday evening. So uh, as Nitin mentioned, I echo his uh, uh, thoughts as well that the product management especially in india i would say has grown uh, to from probably where we started around 10 15 years back when the entire startup ecosystem was getting developed to where we are today i think we have come a long way as as a country in terms of the understanding of product management and even the growth and even the roles right so because uh, it i think the entire product management has been around with the especially the FMCGs for quite some time, but I think in the tech world it has evolved since the entire uh, startup ecosystem uh, kind of grew in India. So it has been a uh, it has been a great evolution. Happy that I've been part of the entire evolution. Uh, my quick journey, I actually never coded. So <laughs> I'm I'm a mechanical engineer, but I've done coding more from a uh, like automation perspective, uh, mechatronics perspective, but never done like coding, coding. But I started uh, more into a product management role, but on the software automation products. And that is how my journey started. Then I kind of transitioned into like a pure play tech product after my 
uh, after my like master's education and since then for last almost uh, 12 odd years i've been in the the tech product management uh, have been part of multiple journeys uh, post my masters i had uh, co-founded a startup brand for almost two and a half years i have been part of uh, companies like zomato uh, i actually happened to uh, kind of co-found uh, one of the early edtech startups which i can call as edtech today but it was not an edtech at that time it was a platform uh, but the, the journey has been interesting my last stint was uh, with the Ritter lab group uh, again it was in the financial services space uh, we were building a health insurance platform uh, focused on health tech but uh, and uh, after that i've also kind of been advisor to few startups so that's a quick recap about my journey perfect um, all right so i think with that we will dive right into it so you know i think so the Arjun, topic yeah Arjun, just one quick ahead, suggestion Nathan. quick one sure. suggestion right uh, we have uh, quite a few people here around 23 24 people if we everybody can take just 5 seconds to type in i think everybody can message send message on the chat right yes so if everybody can just say that you know are they already pm if yes and how many years of experience because that will give us a context to me and uh, rishi that what kind of audience we have right uh, so that we can share our experience in that context rather than too theoretical and to you know rick so if people yes. can just type in yes comma how many years of experience if no it's no Great. I think we are seeing some knows, some with experience as well. I think it's a mixed, mixed kind of batch. Yeah, but I would say generally, if I'm reading it right, there are um, you know about like thirty percent people, forty percent who don't have PM experience. Um, I think majority have a little bit to somewhere around ten years. I think there's one person who said over ten years. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Sorry, Arjun. No, I think this was helpful, Nitin, and I think this kind of helped validate some of the other data points we were talking about earlier with regard to this workshop. Um, so yeah, I hope we can personalize the discussion today based on the audience that's in the room. Uh, what I was going to start with, Nitin, is uh, and and Rishikesh is just kind of addressing the elephant in the room, which is you know how do you actually advance from an individual contributor role to more of a managerial role? I think the some of the critical factors that people think of when they think of this topic is skills and behaviors that they need to adopt and excel in so that they can be perceived as you know high performing high potential talent by the decision makers within the organization um i don't think there's a one size fits all here but i would love to understand what can people or what can pms early pms or people who are just starting in product think about focusing on perhaps from a skills and behavior standpoint uh, to rise within the organization and any other parameters that you want to address apart from skills and behavior. So maybe Nitin, we can start with you. Sure, Arjun. Okay, so see, as you said, Arjun, and as I started with saying, the product management varies from company to company. Uh, so it is very, very important for any individual who's a PM, say, especially APM slash PM to first understand the context of the company, right? Where they are working and they are different kind of organization have a different kind of DNA. So some organizations are quite execution oriented, uh, mostly nowadays, a uh, lot of organizations are speed driven. They are focused on, you know, the speed of their execution, the speed of their output uh, outcome. And there are certain organizations who have you know, strategic outlook also. They look at strategic, long-term strategic view that how do we build differentiation? How do we build long-term impact? So and so forth. So that's one most important thing to understand the context of your company, right? In which context, they, what's their DNA, right? The second thing is that it is very important that, you know, uh, they, are, they are domain skills, they are some functional skills, and then they are soft skills, right? And it is very important for every individual to differentiate these three buckets of skills, right? Domain skills are something which are related to your industry, to your market, to your customer segment, right? Second functional is all about your core skills of product management, right? Uh, how well you are able to do analysis, how able you are able to understand design, how good you are able to write a PRD, user story, so and so forth, how you can get deeper into execution, rollout, so and so forth. And then something on soft skills, which are more generic or general management skills, right? 
again the context of company what are the important traits and soft skills company value a lot and typically companies would have their core values well defined so most of your soft skills should be well aligned to the core values of the company right so for example you know creativity or innovation can be one of the core values for it, right that means that's a skill you need to build bring that creativity out in your skills right or for example you know they will talk about uh, thinking big right so so first of all you need to have a clarity on these three buckets of skill set right and then able to look at those buckets in the context of the company right so typically my observation has been you know most of the companies now in tech world are very execution oriented and if you are an apm and pm you know you know somebody can uh, have a, a different view i want i would suggest that pm should be highly highly focused on the quality of execution because that is what you are going to be uh, you know critically examined you may have a strategic point of view you may have a domain understanding but if you falter on domain understanding you will probably not get so many negative points but if you are you falter on on execution side of it you know that is something where you will be uh, not evaluated well so execution is very critical in the product management that means you need to focus a lot on the functional skills when you say execution right functional skills which are again core for your company in, in terms of understanding of what to be built what solution to be uh, you know uh, built uh, what kind of uh, feature to be what kind of backlog you have to create how do you get execution done how do you roll out how do you show analysis and impact so and so forth so these are some of the things i will basically start with uh, and then we can go deeper and let's rishi add from his side of uh, point of view and then yeah sure thanks david so uh, if you ask me like the transition from individual contributor to senior role right so i think the question that you need to ask is when will i be ready first so look at three layers to it that uh, when you have done an execution role right because you need to really understand as nitin mentioned that you need to execute you need to understand the foundations of product management and how the product works the entire gamut from writing prd to execution to launch to analytics to iterations the entire product life cycle right so basically so if you have done that you are confident about execution you have failed you have learned you have again iterated you have succeeded i think that cycle has to be there like the foundational cycle uh, i would say the second aspects that uh, uh, that even nitin mentioned is understand the business because that is very important a lot of times i mean i've uh, spoken to people earlier as well who were either wanting to get into product management or in a similar situation understanding the business for product manager is very important because otherwise if you just look at the product you will only think about how i make the product better but at the eventually we all are contributing towards the revenue for the sales right so for the business so understanding the business the nature of the business the nature of your user is very important once you are done with this right so we are you are confident of these two things and if you are in a phase of applying for senior roles and if you get something or if you have that again the second question will i be able to do that i think that is when you are ready according to me so uh, if if you are strong in your foundation you are uh, good on your execution and you have that fear whether i'll be able to go to the next level i think that is where you have your answer that you are ready because there will always be any role that you get into which is the next step you will always have that jitters in the stomach which is actually good for you because you will be you will be able to execute or get into that role if your foundation is strong right so that is that is one aspect i would say the second aspect because with any seniority the seniority may or other will come with some reporting to you right so having an eq which you understand that you yourself were an executor and then when you get to the next level you will have somebody who will work with you on the execution so how to manage them is again like a serious question that you need to ask because that is also very important with product you also then are getting into a role where you are actually managing people as well right so uh, and obviously as you grow up the seniority there is more and more responsibility also on people management so having a good understanding on um, basically how i manage people how i give them the freedom how how i basically um, uh, encourage them how i manage them these are all aspects that you need to really understand and be ready for it you may not understand but be ready for it because you are getting into the next role so you have to you may not have experienced that before but you have to develop that eq and empathy for people right so that is the second aspect 
I think the third aspect to me is uh, mainly because you have been in the execution role, you are very close and very attached to the product. So you always think of the product, you always get ideas, you're doing competitive benchmarking, speaking to people, etc., etc. But as you grow, obviously you have other responsibilities also. So I'm not saying you don't do that, but then the ideas can come from somewhere else, right? So the the pendulum starts shifting that you also need to manage that, that you might have two people in your team and then there will always be ideas. There will always be fights around what works best, what doesn't. So again, like understanding that ideas can come from anywhere and obviously the execution is where it will actually, uh, you will understand whether what works or what doesn't work. So I think these are like, I mean, some of the things that you can reflect on when you are actually thinking of growing from more of an individual contributor to a, uh, to a senior role. So this can be a starting point, obviously. I'll just add one more point, Arjun. I think uh, Vishy added a very good point. Uh, 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 you know, when you're a, an individual contributor, right, uh, you, you have a defined focus area that, okay, this is where you need to focus as individual. This is what you need to execute. This is what you need to think about and right. But when you move to, or you're looking to move to a team reporting role, right? With one, two, three, right? What becomes important that now you have the responsibility to understand what other people have to do, not you have to do, right? That means one of the most important skills you have to develop is called big picture view. Can you rise above your own you know, uh, boundaries and think a little bigger in terms of what needs to be done as a team, not as an individual person, right? And that big picture view, again, you know, I keep taking this example, uh, understand in the context of the company, right? In the organization, what is a big picture for your company in, the, in that company's context and for your function? So start building that skill set or that kind of, uh, you know, edge that you understand the big picture, right? Big picture can start from what is the overall vision of the company, then how that fits into the overall product uh, vision. And then how, you know, that, or, or how you fit into that overall product vision and where does your team lie? So that when you go and interact with your team, you're able to give them a big picture and help them understand where are they fitting into the big picture. Uh, and then all in place, then you know that, okay, what is the responsibility you expect person what is that you need to do as a leader of the team right and other person also thinks the team member that oh this is the role i'm playing in the overall big picture and this is the contribution i'm doing and it sets a tone very positive tone as you move into a leadership role because you are actually giving a bigger picture to the people that your role is not this much your role is actually much bigger because the value you are adding to the overall big picture is better is is beyond your personal role so i think that's the important skill set if somebody can start building early on, it adds value when you move and become a leader. And actually, if you start showing that kind of skill set that you understand the big picture and you're able to fit different things into big picture, it shows that you are inching towards a leadership kind of role or team leadership kind of. Role. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant point, actually. And uh, Rishikesh, you also covered, I mean, many, many things, uh, you know, which are going to be critical for people aspiring for more senior roles. Um, it's always good to balance, you know, your nitty gritty day to day execution with kind of thinking more strategically and big picture um, so that you don't get mired in the, you know, just the day to day executional items. You actually think about the, the business strategy and all of those things. And it applies to, you know, some of other roles like I've worked in consulting. So it's the same thing that kind of applied there as well. You know, doing day to day analyses versus big picture thinking of how you can add value to your clients. My, you know, one follow-up question with regard to what we have been discussing, I think Rishi, you mentioned this with regard to team management, right? Like as you uh, rise in your career, you're going to have to deal with more people. You're going to have a team reporting to you. And that's a very good point. My point, which I often hear from PMs, right, is uh, how do we manage other stakeholders who may not be part of our team, right? They might be a matrix structure. You are collaborating with the uh, developers, the designers, the you know strategy folks, uh, maybe analytics team, and then you have the business leaders and everybody, right? Uh, they're not necessarily part of your team, or you may are not necessarily part of their team. How do you kind of you know ensure that you are working towards the common goal, even though you are collaborating with so many different people with different priorities and resources available? I think perhaps it becomes more important as you rise in the career ladder. So 
Um, maybe Rishi, we can start with you on this one. Sure. So uh, again, going back to the earlier point, right? Everything is aligned to the business objective because your product is not independent of the business objectives. So every year for every company, you will have like the business objectives to which the product gets aligned and then obviously the execution, right? There will be some things which are like moonshot projects. There will be something which are BAU projects. There will always be something in between which you need to execute and get things done. So in terms of aligning now coming to your specific question on how do you align with stakeholders? I think, I mean, I would say also a large part of your role in product, whether I would say at whatever level you are in, it's also about aligning with your peers, right? Because again, you are not working independently and this is true for every function. I mean, you go to a finance department, you go to HR, you go to what are operations, everybody has to align with each other. Uh, I think when the challenge comes, it's all uh, the challenge is always about the prioritization because every department, every function will want to kind of push their things first. And that is where I think uh, in my experience, the biggest challenge or the uh, 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 the discussions happen with product are on how do you prioritize and when do you ship our, our priorities, right? So I think that again, like there are priority metrics. Most of the people here are having some background into products. So I don't know to dive deeper into priority. Uh, but again, going back to the alignments of the business, uh, you have to, again, every department has aligned to the business objective. So managing the stakeholders, especially at a senior level, it's more about more strategic thinking that what we want to prioritize, what is the impact on the business, uh, people, product, and then take the calls. So from stakeholder management, it is about, uh, it, it is also about give and take. So you will have to give and take some things, something as a product person in, maybe you have some legacy of your experience, which tells you some things won't work or some things should not be done. But that, I mean, you may not be able to drive those decisions every time, right? You can obviously share your experiences. Sometimes you will have to take a step back, let the product or the, the uh, whatever the other team member is saying, we, you can, you'll have to do it. If it succeeds, obviously you will learn. If it fails, you will have a learning again in that, right? So it, it is always a give and take. And I mean, it's part of the process. So I think you have to be again, mentally prepared for this because uh, like whether in product or any function that you grow, it is it will always be some give and take and you will not necessarily be able to drive things the way you want every time. Any thoughts from you on this one? Yeah, yeah. So Lishi talked about alignment. It's a very, very crucial point uh, when you work with stakeholders. And my personal take is what is the currency of your alignment in the in the company and you know people might get confused what is this currency mean like so currency means that what is the common language you speak across different function and typically that common language would be some kind of org metric right uh, so if you have an org metric or set of metrics or goals already identified right you should bank on those to create a good alignment with different stakeholders see we have to remember that product managers do not own a lot of teams. They don't have reporting from a lot of teams they work with, right? That's a dilemma of this role. You need to influence them, right? And in order to influence people, I say we need to look for instruments and tools and the currency. The currency is typically your metrics. So I think that's the first step. If as a PM, SPM, or as a group product, product, uh, product manager or team leader, right? If you're able to identify that, okay, these are two, three important metrics, which are important for company organization. And everybody has to really hand those metrics. That gives you a lot of levers to do alignment. That's point number one. The point number two, sometimes people that you have, but you really don't know how to measure that metric or how to estimate the impact, right? That's where the second currency comes into, which is called insights. Do you have some universal insights known in the company, right? Either in form of customer research, market research, customer calling, data analysis, whatever it is, right? So do you have those set of insights which are used by everybody as a reference point, right? If you do not have metrics, you do not have ref, uh, impact, do you have those insights, right? And those insights can become another lever, set of levers for you to have a meaningful conversation with stakeholders because then it is not my opinion versus your opinion. It is based on metrics, impact, their impact, and the insights. And then it becomes easy that how you as a product leader or a product manager are trying to influence, use insights to influence the metric. Then this whole discussion is all about 
those two things insights how to use insights to influence metrics and achieve the impact then there is there is no clash of opinions i think these are couple of things which i typically suggest you know upcoming leaders upcoming product managers to focus on figure out these things if you do not have these two levers you are actually in a very tough situation company is in a tough situation you don't have insights you don't have metrics then on what basis you will do prioritization and alignment right if you don't have it then be the person to create those insights then you become leadership or take the step forward and say that okay you bring the insight through competitive analysis data analysis some kind of customer calling so and so forth and bring that alignment and bring everybody on same page so these are some of my thoughts yeah no very interesting i i do like the structure of that answer that in quite a bit in terms of looking at uh, you know the common currency metrics so you speak the common language or in case you don't have a ton of them then find the common insights that everybody has been sharing within the company speaking of insights you know i have the next topic of our discussion related to that but before we get there i just want to let everyone know that uh, in the next 10 minutes or maybe even fewer we will take up your questions um rishi and nitin will be answering any specific personal questions that you have with regard to your specific career journey so do write about it in the chat box and if you want to come up on the stage maybe even share it just you know raise your hand and we can get you on the stage if you want to talk about it um, but yeah now coming back to you know the topic around insights so you know one of the things that we have discussed previously is how do you use these insights in the context when you have let's say you know certain other parameters that you need to prioritize for example you may have certain insights about your users but then you also need to look at your overall business strategy uh, you also need to look at certain product frameworks you know you have your rice prioritization frameworks you have five wise and so many other tactical frameworks that you use so there are multiple ways of kind of decision making as far as i understand in product management right? and as you start to rise as a product leader you have to kind of balance these different uh, frameworks and strategy and the insights how do you kind of balance all of these different things uh, rishi will start with you sure so uh, in terms of now i would say uh, the frameworks i'll start from there because you had mentioned uh, the rice framework prioritization etc right so uh, again given my experience i would say and uh, nitin also mentioned that point right at the beginning that every organization has a way of working and prioritization using frameworks not using frameworks uh, and a lot of other factors right so i think first of all again alignment there is very important in terms of uh, how the organization works so that will first of all uh, set set the tone for you uh, second i would say between strategy and overall execution which is the tactical part i would say uh, it's more or less uh, like two sides of same coin right because the strategy without execution will not really help you understand where you are landing so in terms of uh, uh, now strategy is again like a shepherd right it basically gives you a direction and that direction is actually aligned with your product uh, sorry uh, the business uh, objectives so when you have a business objective which has been set uh, the product aligning aligning the product objectives to the strategy of the business is very important then obviously if you are in a senior role aligning your teams is again very important because uh, otherwise there will be a mismatch so it can't be that your teams are working in a separate way and the objective of the company and the product metrics that you are supposed to drive or track is you know in a different direction right so aligning having a open conversation with your uh, uh, obviously peers as well as your own product uh, function is very important i would say then when if you if you have a large team obviously if you grow grow the ladder you might have multiple products under you multiple teams under you so having direction for every team and every product role or a person is also important right because every person is working on something or the other but i would say the, the way i've tried to work especially for product functions is actually to give every product manager a larger picture and this again like comes from my personal experience if if you are working uh, say whatever at a very big organization and uh, the product manager role is not really to 
say manage an entire app right because that, that's the role of a principal product manager or a head of product or a director of product depending on the designation so if the last guy who's actually managing say a search functionality as a product manager he, if he is getting lost and he is not really aligned to the big picture that that to me is uh, uh, is slightly scary because one is for him it then becomes like a very myopic view of what i am doing uh, his excitement on working on the product slightly starts dipping because uh, he says okay i am a product manager for search i am just supposed to do this but he is not really thinking that this is actually impacting my metrics if i increase my search if i increase my relevancy it impacts my uh, revenues it impacts my customer experience it impacts my overall maus vaus whatever you are tracking right so i think that is very core so the strategy is like this is the target this is what we are supposed to do align the product strategy with the business strategy and then you are obviously get into the execution mode which is more of what needs to be done and how it needs to be done now obviously how i would say in my experience i always try to keep it more flexible because you can get to the same point in multiple ways so if i say okay this is done that this is supposed to be done in this way then obviously i'm micromanaging right so at every level uh, if you are obviously at a senior level you have to also give that flexibility because the last mile guy is actually also driving things he wants his freedom he wants to own something right uh, so i think that is the structure that i follow and uh, i think to sum up sum it up in order to kind of make the strategy and tactics happen it has to be aligned to the business it, the product has to be aligned to the business objectives and obviously the method has to be aligned to achieving those objectives yeah listen yeah. yeah yeah so i think my very direct is it is very important for for a pm or a pm or leaders to understand the state of the company okay uh, very clearly if the company is struggling to even sustain you know st- strategy goes out of the window that's a practical reality if you don't understand the state of the company right you can talk whatever you want to talk about strategy business strategy all those and those things will not works right so if you have that understanding that company is, is struggling for sustainability the idea is very simple your aim is very simple bring the impact right now so you may have to do a lot of tactical stuff because you need to survive as a company you need to survive the winter you need to survive the tough environment right if you have that clarity your decision making is very simple very straight forward right right and the complexity comes where you don't have that visibility one because your maybe leaders are not sharing with you the true picture that what is the state of the company right or maybe you know you are pro- probably not comfortable to understand that reality that a company is struggling to sustain right so it's very important that's point number 1 point number 2 if the comp- if the person if the team is company is not telling you black and white that yeah there is a sustainability challenge right and sometimes company don't share too much of information with maybe you know less experienced pm right you need to read the lines uh, in between right uh, between the lines right that if they are pressur- pressurizing you or they saying that we need to do this there's a lot of you know uh, decision making is happening from the top right you need to read that there is probably a need to focus on immediate impact so that's a point number 1 point number 2 is that if those problems are not there you see that the sustainability is not a problem at all right there is no indication and and right that's where you need to figure out what is the framework you use that's when the framework comes into picture right i typically you know price is a very popular framework right uh, reach impact confidence effort right and in you know every company tries to use a some way or the other these kind of four factors i use one more factor which is today you know people really don't talk about it but i typically discuss in my uh, discussion with pms something called durability if you are working on a feature which is durable is it going to be long lasting you can build a feature which is good reach but it is going to be durable in not that is going to give you a strategic advantage competitive advantage in the long run right so i typically suggest to add that factor that think about whether this is going to be sustainable feature or not right uh, and then look at whether it is fitting into your strategy and then what is the short term impact you need to bring and that's where you look at okay which is my low effort high confidence feature i can quickly do to bring the impact right now right and then bring a balance approach in discussion with the leaders again understanding mm-hmm. the common currency of metric and common currency of insights right 
I think these are the you know my suggested approaches based on my experiences, right? Just to summarize, one is is sustainability the problem? The short term visibility is important. Then you know clear cut. You have guidance. If not, if everything looks good, then definitely look at the features. And then look at what are the things you can do quickly to bring the impact into this, you know, time. Yeah, durability is an interesting one, uh, Nitin, because I, I would say, I mean, not that I'm a product specialist, but the rate at which tech is advancing today and uh, companies are evolving their product roadmap, uh, you know, things like, I mean, Gen AI is changing the entire roadmap of a company within a span of a few weeks or months. I mean, that's, that's an interesting parameter to balance, right? Uh, durability side by side with. Yeah. Arjun, you know, I would see, to be honest, you know, if people see generative AI is once in a decade kind of innovation. Okay. If you yeah. really worry about those kind of innovation, then you will not able to think long term ever. You will be always fearing that or oh, something will come like generative AI. No. I mean, WhatsApp, for example, a classic example, I give this example. WhatsApp ran on simple instant messaging for six, seven years when Skype was already so popular for video call and they literally killed Skype. It's a classic example, right? Yeah, great so example. I don't think, you know, taking example of generative AI and saying that, oh, you know, technology is changing very fast. No, there are a lot of technologies which have been consistent from last so many years. Email, it is still so widely used. People keep saying that email is dead, 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 but it's still widely used for communication. Right. So, so just to counter your point on that, there are a lot of features which can be durable. Now, durability can be in terms of a couple of years to five years, right? But thinking that everything will change every three months, then you are always working short term. You cannot build a long sustainable product company. Yeah. yeah and I think just to add to that point, uh, the technology obviously is supposed to evolve, right? So, uh, Considering that what evolution is happening in the space, how do you incorporate that in your product roadmap is also uh, is also a way of looking at it rather than looking at it that way. So that is interesting. I think there is a question from Rohan. So on the sales objective, and I think partially Nitin already answered that about the stage of the company, right? But uh, as I said, like uh, I mean, everybody is driving for sales, right? If yes. You, if you are working on a product and if you don't think that we are driving the revenues. I think that is probably a biggest mistake that you're doing. So if, if the stage of the company demands that, obviously there will be realignments that will happen. And I think that is one of the nature of either if you, especially when you're working in a tech space, it is a, uh, it, it helps, it actually uh, lets you do that. It's not like a brick and mortar space where once you launch your business and roll out to 300 cities in the country, and then actually the entire effort of rolling out the operations. And I mean, there is a lot of hassle, right? But the tech world actually helps you realign much faster than the way you can realign in an offline world. So I think to answer your question in, in short, yes, I mean, this is, this is the reality. If depending on your business stage, if things are going positive or negative, uh, things will and are bound to change. But at the same time, sales is the bottom line and we are all working towards driving this, the revenue for the company through product. We are not direct owners of the revenue, maybe, but obviously we are a major contributor for driving the revenue. So I think it's just the, just the phase of life of a product manager. So you have to deal with it. There's no, no other option. Yeah, Nitin, I think you had previously shared some thoughts, but now maybe you got a chance to read through Rohan's question. So any additional perspective you want to add here? Yeah, I think it's very clear. Times are very tough, right? And I think the sooner, uh, you know, everybody understands the toughness of the situation, it will be easier for everybody to quickly get on with the work, right? And, and I would just say that, you know, uh, you know, execution is going to be the key. I was, this is what I've been observing from last 16, 17 years being in product. Ultimately, you know, you lose a little bit of strategic thinking. Sometimes if the market is good, everybody is, is doing good. You probably spend a little more time on strategy, but eventually it is all about how good you execute and what's the outcome, right? So this is a constant thing across the history of last, say, 30, 35, 40 years of tech uh, industry overall. So, and then if the Times are very tough and sustainability is a problem. Sales is a problem. 
I think just focus, keep your hands, head down, focus on execution. And the other thing which I'll add is ownership. I think this is another less talked about thing, right? Uh, and this is where PMs are expected to be, you know, more wider owners in the ecosystem than anybody else. Build your muscle on ownership, right? Uh, and there are different ways to do it. I mean, you can have a one hour session just on ownership. It's such a deep topic, right? If things example, like, you know, a PM cannot say that hey, I've done my job, but it is pending on somebody else, right? Just to give in one, you know, uh, big uh, example. So build the muscle of ownership and understand the reality of situation, the business situation and market, and just get on with the execution. If that is a, a situation demands you to do, don't bother about, oh, this is strategy this is not fitting to do, right? This is not fitting into long-term sustainability. You know, all those things are not important if you have to big, right? So I think these are my, you know, very clear cut thought processes, which, you know, I thought I'll share. All right, we are now getting suddenly a lot of questions. So we'll start taking them quickly. I think the next one we have is from Sunil. And his question is, uh, was a PM working on a legacy product and a business team and stakeholders don't want to take the risk of improvising the system. How can we keep a PM learning and growing considering the lesser scope focus on this platform? So basically if you're not kind of revamping things, creating a lot of new features, you're building uh, just you know minor features and uh, on the legacy products how does a pm take charge of their own growth and development in such a scenario um, rishi will perhaps go with you first on this one yeah so again i mean uh, can't can't explain this in very black and white but obviously the business might have their own reasons for doing it as well right so we again there is, uh, look at the broader context. Uh, obviously, there is a, uh, a uh, the specific context. I'll come to that. But, uh, I mean, especially I've seen this when, when it comes to changing the legacy products or legacy systems. It is always, I mean, I, mo most likely the businesses have reached a scale of running that system for 20, 25 years or at least 10, 15 years or have humongous revenues that they are generating through these systems, right? So, obviously, you can't stop the revenue coming in. Uh, they, again, the investments that you need, if it's a very big product is again, like, a, uh, a, a thing that the management needs to really think of on how much investment it will take to actually revamp the product and the revamp will all, obviously always happen in parallel. It can't be just a switch over, uh, next day, right? And even the revamp will have its own challenges because the system that has been built for over a period of years. Uh, to learn and learn the system and build a parallel system which incorporates the current things that you are running on and then build on top of it is is a challenge right so it's not a very straightforward answer on like changing the systems right so that's more of a business strategy view on uh, probably that might be the reason i would say specifically yes i agree with you to a certain extent that the the leeway or the scope to actually play around and learn and learn might not be as agile as as you might uh, uh, think of uh, but again i mean what you are actually learning if the legacy system actually allows you uh, i think maybe you need to uh, agree on what is possible what is not and then actually play around with it right because no business i would say does uh, things like okay i don't want to do this but at the same time tell me if if there is a need for changing something Tell me what is possible, what is not, and can we play around in that, right? So I think that is one of the options that you have to actually make things work and learn and learn from that. I think the other learning that you are, if you are in this situation, is also that you're learning that there is this kind of a situation that is there in a, in a product life cycle, right? So that is also a big learning to me. So uh, I think, uh, I mean, I don't have a very specific answer for this because it also deals more on the business side and the the angle from the management and i think if the legacy system needs a revamp the management will take a call at the right time is what i will just leave leave the thought on the ground nathan you want to add anything to that yeah i'll give two specific uh, thought process here one is if you are in such kind of situation as a pm i'll say that please re-evaluate is it a risky position for you as a carrier or not first of all very objectively because if you're saying that you know business team is not interested to take risk to improve it, 
and you don't foresee you know legacy product moving forward then your role can be in danger first of all okay first of all make sure that you are not in danger right second if you feel that no you're not in danger your role is not in danger and you need to figure out why the business team is not interested to take it forward right because every business wants more business more revenue more profit so do they think that there is no business further business possible right and then i'll again take an example of ownership now being an owner you know can you do something about changing that perception can you think about coming up with your proposal that how more business can be generated from a legacy product and i'm assuming when somebody is talking about legacy product typically these are b2b product right that means you're selling to some other product uh, other enterprise right so as a product manager can you figure out a way to excite your business team that hey there's more juice left in this legacy product and show them how and that for how i think you need to go deeper into understanding your existing customer maybe you need to talk to them a lot more if you are not doing that if you are already doing it do a little bit more talking look at what competition is doing little spend more time on competitive analysis right figure out what they are trying to do look at your customer who are your business what kind of complaints they are raising operationally technically functionally so and so forth try to build different insights from that proposal on the table now if you say they, even after doing all those things there is no proposal you can make then you better look out for some other role simple that means you have given enough thought there is nothing left as a product manager also business team is not excited right then what are you doing in that role then you have to be very objectively reaching out to your manager whoever is managing your role that you should be doing better work if you are a good product manager question here um i'm going to take deepak's question first because for sunil sunil i would uh, actually we have already covered sunil i think there's one question from someone about how to move into product from it services right if you can maybe share a bit about which role you are currently in is it marketing okay so there's a question around somebody being in it services employee and it seems like they're in in a marketing role uh, how would you suggest that they move yeah. into a oh. product Arjun, if I may interrupt, that that's the question sure. from my side. Yeah, so yes. I'm in the IT industry for 15 years now, and more in, current role is more on the service delivery manager and project management. And now I'm looking for the transition to product manager role that I have started with uh, uh, PG course in product management. But like I said, I do not have domain expertise uh, because of being in the service based company. So how should I start career in this? What type of company I should choose? to start my uh, career in this role sure yeah i think that's an interesting transition based question more than you know advancing within the same organization um i think something maybe rishikesh if you can talk about how would you want someone who has some technical sure. domain and know how transition into a product role yeah so uh, i don't know who asked it but uh, ma'am i just want to un understand you have been a delivery manager so i'm sure you must be delivering some or the other product or solution to the client right is is my understanding yeah. correct yeah yeah so i think it's more about mindset and again i have worked with people from the services industry i i mean somebody who had asked me for especially advice on how to transition to a product mind a product role i would say the biggest difference and we had to like there was one more point that we had to cover as part of the uh, the discussion was the the ownership mindset right so here even if you are in a delivery role you are technically managing a product right now obviously the i know the hurdles when it comes to client the requirements suggestions and then the entire cycle of uh, the delivery but when you are working on any solution it is like how large small it might be it's a product that you're working on if you fundamentally look at it right so if you are thinking of that as a product rather than just a delivery and when i say product it's the entire into end packaging right from uh, the the requirement gathering to the utility to who the user is to who like the the user experience to actually understanding uh the the efficiency as in like the ux the product development and the entire cycle right so if you really look at it you are working on a solution which technically you can call it the product which is a product so i think at some level you already understand that so 
if you really start thinking on those lines that i am not a delivery person but i i have worked on products and i have worked on products but i have never thought of them as a products i think that will change the mindset right so it's more about being a product manager probably in your case because you already have 15 years of experience rather than learning the specific skill sets obviously that's more theoretical part on the processes etc but i think it's it's the first thing is the mindset and understanding the user and the core problem that you are trying to solve for so in my opinion you already know that so it's more about just probably finding the right avenue to get into that role rather than actually learning the skill sets i think there was a fairly comprehensive answer from rishi so maybe we can move on to the next one nitin and perhaps you can take this one so the question is from deepak kumar and his question is around decision making hierarchy in large organizations so who really takes ownership of the north star metrics in terms of the you know the product team and uh, so deepak is currently been part of primarily small team so org structure has not been an issue for him so he's just trying to understand if he was to work at a large organization how does decision making hierarchy really play a role and impact pm and apms it is not it's not very different deepak uh, you know uh, ultimately as a pm you know you are responsible to identify what is a not start metric for your product right even in the large organization the only difference not only i would say there would be many different but one of the differences uh, uh, around metrics would be that there will be a lot many metrics which will be talked about uh, in the large organization because a lot of stakeholders will be connected to your product so it might be marketing operations sales uh, revenue uh, right and they might or may have their own metrics also to track which are dependent on your product so so that means you may have to look at multiple metrics uh, you know on from the from the business side as well as your own north star metric uh in order to make decision in order to see how your product is doing so and so forth right uh so that's more or less same right the ownership lies with the pm only the only th- the advantage you will get in a hierarchy that you will have more leadership to support you more leadership to guide you or mentor you so i think this is a this is a question that i can really relate with given that you know i'm currently leading a relatively early stage startup but her question is around how do you ensure adoption of a new product or feature that addresses customer pain points and aligns with the long term the moonshot goal that organizations have especially when they are early stage or small uh, rishi you you work with different organizations right you work with yeah. mostly large but also early stage startups you said you co-founded a company of your own so how yeah. would you advise asta in such situation sure so uh, again normally moonshot products are something that is more ambitious right so with the ambition obviously uh, there is a degree of unknown i would say because these are very ambitious products and when you're building it obviously these are these are keeping in mind that this is going to make a long term impact uh, on the product or the or the problem that the customer is facing so the cycle to actually get to there in order to achieve success or uh, the adoption is is a rigorous process right so very few products actually become success overnight and they if they become success if they are really trying to either play on your emotions or you are actually trying to or the emotional when i say emotions i mean like the emotional cord or it's more of a a, a very like a very important need uh, i think one of the example i can think of is the upi adoption especially in term, in the in the days of covid right so earlier it was the, it, it was not that it was in the round but especially with covid it was just amplified i mean today i think hardly anyone of us must be carrying cash or using it only when it is needed so i think it is in terms of actually adopting you need to understand the user it has to be a rigorous process in terms of what works what doesn't i think you, this question is more about the growth side of it rather than actually the product side of it so the growth is always a rigorous process there is no set rule to it you have to obviously keep on trying changing and actually iterating stuff to get to the get to the again adoption level is a very subjective uh, definition right so you have to again have your 
uh, goal set. It can't be just mass adoption. You have to have your target segments and then target numbers to actually get to that uh, mass adoption if it's a mass product. One that I have heard often, I'm sure Nathan, you have probably as well, which is uh, from a show. And the question is around the differences in PM role at early stage startups versus more mature established organizations, which I think the, the way he has contextualized though is very important, which is which one of these is better for career growth when you have less experience in the product space? Uh, actually, it doesn't depend on which organization you start your career with. It all depends on what kind of role you get. So, for example, typically a younger startup, in younger startup, you know, your role may not be well defined. So, uh, you will get a opportunity to make your hands dirty across the roles or, you know, there will be lesser individual responsible people, right? So, you may be able to make your hands dirty in a lot of other things, right? So, you might have a very wider knowledge because of which you may have a lesser deeper knowledge. So it's like you may have a width in your knowledge, a wider experience, but maybe you lack depth, depth uh, because you're trying to do so many things, right? The product manager may probably will get involved a lot in design, will get involved in customer research. You'll do a lot of things or in, even in marketing or even working in uh, with the technology team very closely on the solutioning part of it, right? Uh, very closely on testing, so and so forth across the uh, different skill sets and across the different uh, problem areas and responsibilities, but then you may not get energy and time to go in detail. Whereas in some of the established organization, and when I say established organization, I'm particularly referring to uh, the, the FANGs, the big ones, the multinational companies like, you know, Flipka, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, Facebook, Amazon, Google of the world, right? Which are established, mature in their processes, they you get better time and a chance to go deeper into your skill set because your role will be well defined. Uh, so, but which is better? Very difficult to say because it all depends on how you take your role forward, right? So, if you keep working in smaller, smaller companies, maybe working with smaller companies will give you better growth if you keep working with a lot of startups. Whereas, if you work in a in a well established maturity and you move the established maturity, your career can move forward faster, right? People move from Google to Facebook to Apple to Microsoft much faster because their working style is quite similar. Whereas people who have worked in continuously some startups, they grow very well in startups because they have understood the hustle and bustle and the, uh, the rigor of the companies and they are able to adapt to startup culture very fast. So it's very difficult to say which is, which is the good starting point. It all depends on what is the direction you want to take, right? If you are okay with the, you know, the, the hustler, uh, hustle culture of startups, then maybe starting with the startup companies better because you build that muscle. Uh, if you are want to go deeper, build your skills, very strong or functional skills, domain skills, and you get an opportunity to start with a you know, world-class organization like Google or Facebook or Apple, you can build a strong career there also. So both options are open. It's up to you how you want to take your career forward. Both have pros and cons. I would just add one more point here because uh, the key word to me is less experience. I would say if you are less experience, it's all about learning. So focus on that. I think uh, uh, like, I mean, if you really have somebody who's guiding you with your small startup, definitely you will get good experience. If you go to a large, large startup, as Nidin mentioned, it has its own nuances, but anywhere you have somebody with your less experience guiding you, I think that is the best experience for you. So focus on learning uh, rather than thinking about the startup because that is where your focus should be if you are in a very early stage of your career, especially on product. Thanks, because that's the key there, learning and go. Um, last question from Devendra, and then we'll start to wrap this up because we are reaching our final time here. So Devendra's question is, if a PM has basic background and knowledge of technology. So I, by technology, I imagine probably means engineering, coding, those kind of things. Um, and they want to learn more about tech. How should they proceed so that they can perhaps collaborate with the tech team better? I'm guessing, Devendra, you don't necessarily want to uh, transition from a PM role to more of a tech role. 
I'm guessing you just want to uh, grow your muscle within tech so you can be a more effective collaborator with, uh, with the tech team. So, uh, Rishi, do you want to take this and then we quickly get Nitin's thoughts yeah. and wrap this up? Yeah. Yeah, as I said, like at the beginning, I am I'm no techie, I have never coded. As I said, like I've never done coding. Uh, so I've survived so far. So I think there is there is definitely a way of doing it. I think all you need to understand is how things operate. Uh, obviously, there are specialists who are supposed to code and who know their subject matter. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's all about logics, right? So when you are building a product, obviously, uh, it is it is fundamentally a, a logic that you are building when it comes to coding. So if you understand your logics, if you understand uh, like how things should work, especially from the user flows, uh, journeys, and then data storage and whatever in between, right? So I think you don't need to be a tech specialist. Uh, obviously, the team, the tech team that you have is the specialist. So you need to mainly, uh, if you don't have the tech tech skill sets, uh, I think as you grow in your career, you'll definitely start understanding and getting those. I've done that. I'm, as I said, like I've, obviously you have everybody uh, of us who's an engineer has uh, touched base with the coding at some time, but may not be full fledged into a tech role as of your career. But you will definitely get that as you grow. And at the same time, if you are focused on your logics, understand the product, understand the user uh, flows, etc. I think you can definitely uh, grow. So there is, I don't think you need to really worry about these. Just stick to basics and focus on your fundamentals. So that that will help. Nathan, uh, since you do have some tech background, perhaps you can add yeah, yeah, some yeah. perspective. Here. See, my yeah, my personal point of view is that it does help if you have a little bit of you know, decent tech knowledge. And I, I think the starting point is very simple. There's so much of information available online, right? So you understand the context of your company, you understand the product you're working on, the technology being used, right? So first of all, just read about those basic technologies, right? Whether it's a web technology or server-side technology, front-end, whatever, just a bit about, you know, different flavor because, so that's one thing I'll suggest, right? Second is, I would suggest that if you're really keen, get involved into technical discussions with your a little more technical discussion with your engineering folks. Try to understand, uh, you know, get to involved into the testing part of it because testing is will tell you how you're testing, how the functional system testing is happening. Right? You may be doing UAT, but just get involved with the system testing, right? Uh, uh, and uh, and that these are some of the ways you can start learning some of the nuances, some of the jargons, and some of the uh, frameworks uh, on the technology side, right? And, and once you have it, then you will figure out that it becomes so easy to interact with the engineering team because you're able to understand their language. You're able to speak same language, you're able to communicate in their language, right? So, so these are some of the things you should do and then see obviously based on your appetite and your interest level, how detailed you want to go. Uh, my experience says that it always helps uh, technology uh, understanding, but then yes, you have a lot of work to do on product management side. You don't want to become a technology guy enough information where you can add value from your side. All right. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. I think, somebody, I think somebody, Ashok, wanted that his second part of the question I didn't answer. I'm just going back to that. Uh, I think he wanted yeah. to know when exactly to transition into the product management role, product manager role from APM. I think that transition is, is going to be, uh, you know, as per the you know, the growth charter in your company, for example, APM is also product manager role. It's just that your responsibility areas may be smaller, right? I think there are some of the nuances based on the, your company, uh, which they will evaluate you on. For example, you know, at APM to PM level, they will evaluate whether you are able to work independently now with lesser guidance and letter, lesser mentorship to drive some of the complex pieces of the puzzle. For example, are you able to write good PRD? Are you able to uh, understand the customer problem very well. Are you able to get in, involved into design if you have a front-end facing product? Are you able to get involved with business into some kind of discussion, alignment? Uh, are you able to do, right? Are you able to spend good uh, time with engineering team and able to dissolve their pro doubts about your requirement and story? So these are some of the things where when you see that you're able to independently drive some of these uh, activities, tasks, some of the complex uh, areas of your uh, work, then that means you are ready to be a product manager, full-fledged product manager, where you need lesser guidance, lesser mentorship, and now you can probably run more independently. And again, again, I keep repeating it, look at the context of the company. What are the things they value uh, at the PM level? Build that muscle in your, uh, you know, 
activities. All right. I know we have definitely short beyond our time. We have one more uh, question. It seems like Nitin, Rishi, do you have a few extra minutes or would you like us to wrap up? We can answer the yeah, question. Yeah, I can take one last question actually. Yeah, we can okay. take one. Five more minutes. Yeah. Okay, Anurag, I see that you have raised your hand. So do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hi, everyone. Hi, Nathan Rishi. Thank you uh, for the amazing insights provided by you. And, uh, you know, these are definitely uh, going to help uh, each one of us in our career. Uh, my question was specifically to Nathan. Nathan, I was, uh, you know, engaging with uh, one of your LinkedIn posts recently, uh, which I find very intriguing. Uh, you mentioned about, you know, being average with all of the work you do in life and, uh, you know, or leave many of the things behind and be uh, you know, specialist or be best in two or three things in your life. So if you can, you know, uh, translate that into the product domain, it would be, you know, really helpful to get the nuances from that uh, post. Okay. Okay. I think you're talking about, I, I uh, shared one of the snippet from a book I'm reading right now. Okay. okay. Uh, Mark Manson, right. Uh, so that context was much wider. It was about life, right. Uh, it was not about one particular function. I don't think I product management function that was about that you can do one great thing in life not multiple great things right but if i have to if since you're asking me this question i'm thinking about it right so i think you have to build a muscle at a very grand level in product management do you want to be a more like a product strategic manager versus you want to be a person who's able to be excellent in execution product execution right because these are two different big pieces of puzzle right uh, strategy without execution is useless. Execution without having a strategic direction is hitting in the dark, right? Both have to go hand in hand. But as a long run, right? Either you can be a generic product leader saying that, oh, I understand strategy and I can drive execution. Or you can take a decision that, oh, I want to be an excellent strategist in product. The best strategist, you know, in India or in the world, right? I'm able to think long term. I'm able to build mind blogging strategies, what can be a differentiator? Or you say, you give me any problem area, I can build excellent product solution around it, right? So maybe you can think about those, but if you feel that, oh, I want to be great as a strategy guy, and I want to be great as a product execution guy, great planner, I'm not very sure. I've not seen even a single leader like that. They always have one very strong point, either they are strategic, and then they, they have a hands-on approach and execution, or somebody who's very hands on with execution and maybe not that detail oriented into strategic, uh, you know, contribution. I Nathan, hope I could able to give Nathan, it. What about, what about Elon Musk? Would you, would you say he is, he's only a strategist, not an executive? Yeah. See, see that's the <laughs> problem in the world today, right? We no, look I at know, just few superstars. We look at few supernovas and we yeah. always get attracted to a supernovas. There are millions of stars who are good people, good leaders, right? Uh, so, so very difficult if you, no, uh, those are exceptional people. That was a right? tongue in cheek question. I, I didn't really mean it that way, yeah, but yeah. I think a lot of people are looking at Elon Musk, like you said, as the reference point, as the aspirational point of the, what they want to become, even a lot of PMs and, you know, aspiring no, uh, you know, I, I will not recommend that because, you know, you also have to look at the bigger picture beyond your professional life, right? Mm -hmm. That guy works 120 hours in a week, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, he has a reason why. Do you have a reason why? See your own reason to be like Elon Musk. Just blindly because he is famous. He's famous because he has a why to be famous. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rishi, do you want to add anything to uh, this last question that was raised? Yeah, so uh, I think, I mean, probably Nitin has more context because he's reading the book. But I would just say that... Uh, I think, see, I mean, basic philosophy of life is uh, you ha you'll have to go through it, right? I mean, whether it's a product career, whether it's your life career, uh, again, as Nathan rightly said, it is like you have to choose your own reason and you have to cho choose your own reason to succeed. I would say don't think of uh, uh, success in terms of what Elon Musk is doing, but just think about whether you are satisfied in what you're doing because if you are not, then obviously it is going to be uh, I mean, you're going to work and coming back, right? So if you're enjoying it, as, as everybody says, like, like work takes major part of your uh, life, I think uh, it's it's very important. So 
yes i mean you have to balance if you like doing 20 things i i mean i think it's up to you i mean it's it's really if that gives you pleasure if that if that gives you happiness that gives you uh, but at the end of the day if you want to be really skyrocketing successful then obviously you will have to go vertical at some point in the time very few people will go horizontal and become successful even amazon started with selling books right so they didn't go flat and started selling anything so <laughs> Yeah. So you can go horizontal when you are when you are deep. So Elon Musk first went deep and then he's now going horizontal. So. That's a great perspective. I think that makes a lot of sense. Become a master of one first, and then you can, you know, become See, well, jack of. I mean, to be very crude, once you have money, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> so it's it's you can go horizontal, you can go vertical, you can go tangential, whatever you want to do. So. amazing so i think we have shot way beyond our time but i really want to thank everybody who was able to join us today and stayed for thank over you. an hour on a friday evening i don't know how many people do that you guys are clearly very ambitious and driven in your careers so good for all of you and special thanks to uh, rishi you and nitin thank you so much for thank taking you. time out for this uh, i just want to leave everyone with one last thought so you know this workshop obviously She provided a lot of new insights, and uh, you know both Rishi and Nitin shared their experiences. But as you could see, their questions, uh, a lot of times the answers to their questions were it depends. What that means is, you know, your context, your unique career journey is very important for them to guide you in a very uh, personalized way. For that, in case you want to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with Nitin or with Rishikesh, uh, we have them as mentors on our platform. i've shared the links here in the chat box we will also email it again to everybody who has registered for this workshop in case you want to have a uh, you know, one on one personalized mentorship from either nitin rishikesh or our other mentors please do check us out and uh, you know, you'll get very structured and ongoing mentorship so yeah that's it from my end nitin any parting thoughts from you no no so i am i'm, I'm... i'm excited to see the you know that kind of zeal and aspiration among so many young people uh, product management is a very exciting but at the same time very very challenging uh, be very very sure why you want to be in product management first for the people there are a lot of people who were not in product management that's one the why has to be very clear do not just look at that or have a perspective that product management is a very glamorous role it is actually not okay it is it is indeed a uh, very demanding role uh and people who are at apm and pm level right uh, you know my only uh, point would be that uh, the canvas is yours the lot to do in india if you are in india lot of growth opportunities you know go all out as rishi said in one of the points that go all out and just worry about learning growth will automatically come you learn and just use those learning apply your learning do apply your learning the growth will automatically come right there are lot of opportunities coming in india Yes, there's a winter going on. There's a tough time, but it will not last long, right? That uh, probably fifth or sixth time I'm seeing down, and you know, you know, people losing jobs uh, uh, and not very uh, happy state, very sad state. But just hang on, keep learning, keep applying your knowledge. You will see a light at the end of the tunnel. Rishi, any thoughts from you to close up? Yeah, I think just uh, concluding one of the points that we covered in the uh, as as the agenda as well, like strategic versus tactics, right? So I think just I mean bear in mind where you want to head at this stage. It might change tomorrow, uh, but tactics is more about execution. So keep on executing. I think that will really take you to where you actually want to be. So keep keep heading the north star way that you think is the north star right now. and if needed keep on changing the north star because that is that is what will change the course for you so i think that's about it i think on a lighter note arjun probably would try to be the steve jobs by saying one last thing so <laughs> so no i think uh, you both did a tremendous job of uh, sharing very personalized and balanced insights you know a lot of times people just share the one size fits all solutions but i saw that nitin and you both were trying to really cater to each and every person's unique uh, context and i think that matters a lot so i don't want to sound like a broken box but guys do check out our platform and i'm telling you it will definitely add a lot of value to your career if you start having one on one mentorship with 
you know, people like Nitin and Rishikesh, even if there is somebody in your own network you can connect with through that, you know, it's it's been a game changer for me and for a lot of people I know. So I, I'm sure it will add a lot of value. Yeah, but with that, I think we can call it uh, a day and a week. And I hope everybody has a great weekend. Thank you so much again for joining. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye.